Hey guys, Haley here. I'm going to be working on the ZX-10R today. Um, so this is the first time I've shot this bike. The S1000 is hanging out in the back. So today, we've got a quick shifter. So as probably some of you guys might know, the Gen 4 ZX-10R does not come with any kind of quick shifter. Um, or anything even resembling one. The Gen 5 does have that option, the Gen 4 does not. So I went ahead and I ordered one of these. I already have a power commander. Um, so this is just gonna go along with uh, my power commander and this was it, just this sensor, this is all I bought. So this is the quick shifter. I'm gonna go ahead and be walking you guys through the install of it today on a Gen 4, so 2011 to 2014 ZX-10R. Uh, so because I don't have street fairings or anything even resembling street fairings, I'm just going to go ahead and get access to my power commander, uh, which is under my seat. So um, that'll be a first step. And then if whatever kind of fairings you have, if you have street fairings, uh, wherever you've put your power commander, you'll just need to get access to that because these two little wires are going to have to go into your power commander. And we'll walk through all that later, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, guys, so power commander right here. So basically what we're going to be doing is once I install the actual quick shifter, it's kind of hard to see, but there are these pins, these holes in the top of the power commander. Basically all it's doing is sending a discrete signal to the power commander to say, hey, shifter went please cut ignition by 65 milliseconds or whatever it is you set it to. Um, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the actual shift rod. All right, so I got my shift rod off here. There's a bunch of garbage in it. All right, so I'm not a stickler for shift rod position. If you were, basically the best way to do it is to measure this exact length and then make sure that whatever you were doing with this, the sensor was the exact same length. I needed to adjust mine anyway, so I'm not gonna mess around with that today. But basically, this is only gonna fit in one spot. So it looks like we're gonna end up going right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just thread that on. Be way easier if I had taken the heim joint off, but it is what it is, so. So this one is actually reverse threaded. So keep that in mind. So as you can see, my shift rod is way too long. And I knew I was gonna have a problem with it. So what I'm gonna plan on doing is moving some of this out of the way and actually moving this to give me some more course adjustment because this is your course adjuster and this is your fine. So I'm actually going to take this off and give myself as much room as I possibly can. So as you can see we're a lot closer to what I would consider normal. I'm actually going to keep going on this bad boy as well. Get as much of that rod side as the sensor as I possibly can. It's a little gross. All right, that's probably as far as I can go. All right, guys, as you can maybe tell, the original shift rod I had, which I don't have here anymore, will not work for this install. Um, it's too long. So basically what I had to do was, so DinoJet does sell shift rods, um, but the one it suggests for this bike is dual um, male, which doesn't make any sense for this install because these are both male on both sides. Um, so what I did is I um, went out to the local 
hardware store here, we basically just picked up a threaded rod and two couplers um, because this is right-handed thread and this is right-handed thread. So nothing fancy with the left-handed thread. That's what this is on this side. So basically what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna make myself a shift rod. So go ahead and do that now. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my coupler, just put the two ends of the rods together. Just bring my coupler down about halfway. And it's important when you're doing this, this sensor should really be on this side uh, and the, you want the cord pointing up. I'll get into more detail about why in a second, but just trust me on this one for now. So not the prettiest solution that's ever existed, but it'll work. So now what I've got to do is I need to run this cord up under the frame and then likely what I'll do is I might just run it through here under this panel and then just pop it out into here and go right into the the uh, power commander. All right so what you're gonna, gonna want to do here for your sensors you're gonna want to identify if you're pushing or pulling and that will vary based on if you're how your shift rod is set up as well as if you're normal or GP shift. So I'm normal shift so and this only obviously does not work shift auto blipping down. So this is up only. So when I go to shift up, it's pushing the sensor. So this is a push type. So I want to use the push type pin, which is the green and blue. So I'm just going to ignore this other one. That one's for if I was pulling, which in this case would be if I was GP shift. All right, so I've actually ended up taking that side fairing off just so I could see a little bit better what was happening. And I'm trying to see, doesn't look like I'll be able to fit this connector down um, next to the tank. So what that means I'm going to have to do is lift the tank up a little bit. Not hard, but I'm just going to have to do that. So I did most of it. I just want to show you what I've done. So basically, I'm going to route it along the outside of my sprocket cover here because I still have a sprocket cover. Um, and then all I did was just kind of pick the tank up a little bit so I could get some clearance in there and then just pulled the uh, two pins up. So now what I'm going to do is just do some finishing touches um, and connect these up and then I'll show you from there. All right, so I've got my the rest of my cable up here mounted to the green and blue wires like we said. And now what I've done is, I don't have a lot of clearance here, so it's hard to show, but there's these pins on the back. So those are the set screws that hold them in. We're gonna use two and, sorry, three and four uh, for this quick shifter. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and do that and just put those in there and I'll show you what it looks like. I have almost no room to show you guys anything here, but take my word for it, it's in two and three. Pretty self-explanatory, you just screw those uh, set screws into it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna probably button up the fairings and I'm going to zip tie this wire here just to make sure that I, you know, you wanna make sure you've got enough play to do to shift and that's not a problem. And also to make sure that it doesn't go into any moving parts because that would be very unfortunate with your new quick shifter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you guys what the setup on the uh, laptop looks like for the DinoJet quick shifter. Hey guys, Haley here again, just finishing this up. So I've got the laptop plugged in to the power commander and the bike is on. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna enable the quick shifter and I'm not gonna do a screen grab or anything for this because it's super easy. Um, just go into power commander tools, configure, feature enable, and then here you're going to see there's a list for an item for a quick shifter. Basically just going to turn that on and it's already set to switch input two, which is three and four on the pins that we talked about earlier. And then this is how it comes pre-configured. I'm not going to change anything about it right now. I've heard the stock one works okay, um, but we're going to go give it a ride now because it should be good to go. So it's going to go ahead and hit okay. It's going to apply it and we are good to go. So I'm uh, gonna button it up and then go take it for a ride, let you know how it works.
Alright guys, we're on the ZX-10R. Just gonna go out and get on this main street and give the quick shifter a quick try. Just so you guys can see how it works. Alright, so I'm not gonna floor it or anything, but... close to 100 subscribers and uh, until next time enjoy the ride see ya <laughs>